Okay, so this is, uh, we're starting now the third drusha of Drusha's Haran. And the Ran is sticking to discussing brothers. I don't really think that is um, actually a key point of relevancy for him, but I found it interesting. Uh, this this um, Drusha is on the Pasuk, Hashem said to Moshe and Aaron, Barat Mitzrayim, when they were still in Mitzrayim, Lamar saying, This month shall be for you the first of months. Uh, the first uh, for you of the months of the year. Um, so, uh, the, to give you a little background, make it maybe a little more real, the editor of the, of the uh, Masada of Cook edition concluded that this drusha was given um, on Parshas HaChodesh because somewhere within the drusha, he says uh, something about this week's Parsha or that we're, we just laned and he quotes Kude. So in odds are, because Parshas Chodesh can fall out on Pekude, odds are he did, gave this drasha on this Pasuk because it was Parshas Chodesh, Parshas Pekude. Um, which kind of like, you know, I'm trying to picture what kind of shul hires the Rod to give a drasha. I mean, like this whole scene becomes a lot more real and, and, and a little more um, tangible that, with, that, with that insight. But um, the Ran is going to be discussing the relationship between Moshe and Aaron, the uniqueness of Moshe, the uniqueness of Moshe's Nevuah. Um, Aaron's, Aaron, he less discusses Aaron's Nevuah, but discusses the Urim Vitumim as a, as a means of, of, uh, of getting messages. He, uh, the Ran spends a lot of the Drusha discussing what is Nevuah. Um, which is something I hope to open with our own, with my own tangents this week. But let's look at the text. So before speaking of tangents, before we get to the Ron's text, what I find interesting about this um, pasuk, which is the first mitzvah given to Bnei Israel, is how often the Shoresh Ches Dalad Shin is repeated in this pasuk. Right, we read it. This month shall be for you the beginning of months, right? First for the months of the months of the year. You could equal, well, not equally, but you could creatively read this if you're very into etymology. This newness shall be for you the first of newnesses, the first for the newness of repetitions. And I'm not saying that that's shot in the puzzle. What I would say, though, is that it, I can't picture that people who think in Lashon HaKodesh standing around Harsinai getting this message repeated uh, to them from Moshe and Aaron or from Moshe via Aaron um, wouldn't hear that subtext. If you were to send it, I had the word new, 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 new over in it, um, and you were just in general conversation, you'd probably only hear the idiom and not hear the etymology. But if you're getting a message from God and, and the message says, hey, here's the first mitzvah and the first mitzvah is all about renewing and coming new. I think there's a message there just in the wording of the Pasuk that people who are listening closely as you would assume they would, given that this is you know, the first commandment they're getting from the Rabboni Sholom, um, no, the Ron does not bring this. Uh, I explicitly said I'm starting with my own tangent, but every every parsha of Chodesh, it strikes me that uh, that we start we start the first mitzvah discussing being new. So let let's actually, since we're learning Jerusha's Haran, get get to Jerusha's Haran. Im hayos shatora elokis klaleu pratel v'dukeha namrami pi Moshe. Um, even though, I mean, we, this im can't be an actual conditional. I mean, he's not opening up to question. 
that even though the the divine Torah in all its generalities, its details, its um, nitpickiness, got a better definition in Keha? Nam Rami P. Moshe was said for, by Moshe, Moshe's mouth, the mitzvah zoz shehi rishona, this mitzvah, which is the first one, shenitztavu ba Yisrael, sorry, she rishona shenitztavu ba Yisrael, it's not the first mitzvah because there's Mila, there's like, you know, Abram and Achai, there's, but the first mitzvah that Kwa Yisrael is given as Kwa Yisrael, hadibur um, l'shneihem, Hashem spoke to both of them. Because both of them uh, were busy with the redemption from Mitzrayim. Therefore, it was appropriate that they should be busy with this mitzvah, which it, whose basis, whose cause is the gula, and it is um, one of its topics. Meaning that why is Nisan the Rosh, the first month of the year? Because it's the month that Pesach happened in. So therefore, since they were busy making Pesach actually happen, Hashem wanted to give the mitzvah of commemorating Pesach with the beginning of the year to both of them. But Ode, and more so. He nevuas Aaron, Kaduma Bisman, Lenevuas Moshe. Aaron was a Navi before Moshe was, earlier in time than Moshe was. Allah v'shalom. To Moshe amru le'alei, okay, to Moshe amru, like it says, now I want, le'eli, te'eli, but I want to show you the Pasuk in Shmuel. Ba'yavo ish ha'elokim el'eli, the, uh, the messenger of God, you know, the, the, the Navi, came to Eli, and he said to him, I revealed myself to you, to, uh, sorry, to your father's house. When you were still in Mitzrayim, um, in the house of Paro. And this is what Yechezkel means when he says, um, yeah, Hashlichu. Right, get rid of the guy who is um, who looks in inappropriate places or sees inappropriate things, and uh, get rid of the idols of Mitzrayim. Don't don't uh, become tummy with them. Now about these two, we have this Medrash Shraba down at the bottom of the page, because I couldn't fit on the side. Um, and the Medrash Rabbah is what the Ran is using to tie those Pesukim together. Rather than learn the Medrash Rabbah, we're going to look at the, the Ran's overview. This is what Yechezkel said that uh, Aaron gave the Nevu in Mitzrayim. So what was the Neglesi El Besa Vicha that the Navi tells Eli? It is, uh, Aaron was told, get rid of those people who look at inappropriate things and get rid of the idols of Egypt. When Hashem remembered us for good, that took us out of the servitude, the Golos Mitzrayim, and the exile of Mitzrayim, Nivchar Moshe. Moshe was chosen. And he, in his great Anava, shrunk away from, the, from this uh, honorable, this great Shlichus. Mitzurav Leze Amru, related to this, I said, Kiliyos Kaved Peh, Ukvad Lashon. Uh, because he was he was uh, hard of speech. Lo yia kadosh Hashem and nichbad heyosu shliach meyos me Hashem yisparach li Yisrael. They did not feel that it would be a kiddush Hashem if he were the shliach to. Sorry, he did not feel it would be kiddush Hashem if he was Hashem shliach to Yisrael. 
Belmel Hagoyim, and to the emperor, meaning Paro. I'm defining emperor because there are multiple nations here. Ka'amro, like it says, Vayomer mi Moshe el Hashem. Moshe said to Hashem, Biado, well, Biado Hashem, Lo ish devarim anochi. I am not a man of words. Gamit mo gam shushom. For quite a while, not yesterday, not two days ago. Game oz dibar dabercha elav decha. Uh, even when you, from before you spoke to your servant, right? So he says that he's hard of speech. What does Hashem answer? So Hashem gets angry with Moshe and says, Hello, Aaron uh, Achicha. Won't it be Aaron, your brother, Halevi? Yodati ki daberi daberhu. I know that he will be speaking. For you. Klomar, Yadati Malas Midosov. I know the glory of his Midos. Shalo Yakbid Im Shlichus. He won't care that you will be the main messenger. Vahu Lo Yishamesh Rakishmiad Varecha. And he won't serve, he'll only listen to you. So I don't know if this was intentional or not, but this whole thing of which brother is Rosh recurs so many times in the second Russia, right? Asaph thought he would be the Rosh, Yaakov, right? Yeah, ya- Yaakov thought that uh, history required he'd be the Rosh. But I don't know if that's what's going on here, but maybe, I mean, maybe he's contrasting Aaron's willingness not to be the Rosh with Asaph's unwillingness. As Theron doesn't, plenty of others do. Um, and then continuing the same pasuk, so right after Yedaber Hu, uh, he's also coming to greet you. He's gonna, uh, he saw you and he, he's excited. His heart is happy. Not only doesn't he care that he's not the, the head. Elagam Kishira Oscha Mala Azos when he sees you at this great level, you smackly go he's going to be excited. Ukvar Khashfu Rabasenu Zal Zel Mala Gadola La Aron. Kazal already said that this is some incredible level that Aaron reached. We should keep El Sharaz and he got rewarded for this. Oh, I changed the, the text here from his version to what we have in our Gemara. That's why they're per- crossed out parentheses and brackets all over the place. Vamar Rabbi Malai. So Rabbi Malai said, uh, this is in Perakhelet in Sanhedrin. Bishar Barachov is a bo. The schar that Aaron is going to see Moshe and get happy about it. I told you the Choshen Mishpah comes up. That's how he earns the Choshen Mishpah. Because he wasn't jealous of Moshe. He also Nivchar Nivua, that Moshe was chosen for Nivua. Even though Aaron was a Navi first. Therefore, uh, Hashem gave this first mitzvah by speaking to both of them. So the Ran is emphasizing that, first of all, that Aaron was Navi first, and he proves this from a Medrash and Sukkim, well, the same Sukkim the Medrash uses. Uh, second of all, Aaron is not only okay not being the leader, he's excited to see that his brother is the leader, even though he was passed over. He was the Older brother who was the Navi first. Um, and that is such a beautiful uh, Mida. And uh, notice it says, the um, uh, Belibo, therefore he gets the Choshmish, but Al Libo. So just as the heart that was connected to Moshe, it's the same heart that wears the Choshane. 
um, with the names of the Shvatim, which is also very Beinam Lachaver um, uh, is a is a reward for the uh, for that for that you know willingness to to share in his brother Simcha instead of getting jealous. Um, we're going to see that there's a little more to the media connected media than that because uh, it, the Ran says it's not only true of the Chosh Mish, but it's truly Urm um, Batur, which he assumes are different things and not every Rishon does. But that's the that's where he's, uh, everybody okay with this? Okay. Amnon, Yeshla Inyan, Yeshla Yain, we have to look deep. Echa Yeshalo, Hishlam Hashem Yisbar Chumosh Rabbeinu Shlemus Gemura. So now we have a second question, okay? So Moshe was not, was not, was not eloquent speaker, right? So Hashem had to pick Aaron to be an assistant, and yay, Aaron, he was great about being demoted from the first of the family to be a Navi to assistant to his brother. Why didn't Hashem create Moshe to be perfect? That he wouldn't need a partner in his uh, message. In, sorry, in his shlichus, in his message. I don't know the right word here. Um, in his mission, he ain't suffix. This is an incredible statement. Um, there's no doubt that the what Mo Moshe and the level he reached were above Teva, were supernatural. And Hashem completed his Nevu him in the aspect of his Nevua. In a miraculous way, so a, a level of nevuah a person can't reach on their own. Um, sorry, but a person doesn't have the koach, the potential, or the ability to achieve. What's his proof? Proof is this puzzle. No other navi came. Up in Israel, like Moshe, Asher Yedoa Hashem Panim El Panim, who uh, who was uh, known by God uh, face to face. Zel pasuk with this pasuk, Hodianu Shenavuas Moshe Madrega so who davar lemalam and ateva. This pasuk can only be true, and therefore lets us know that Moshe's nevua and the level he reached is something above the natural. And therefore, a person couldn't reach it in a natural way. Because if a person could achieve it naturally, how could, how could the Pazak say that another Navi would not come like Moshe? Would it be? Would Hashem ever keep good from, uh, from from what's it called? Someone who deserves it. Yeah, yeah. No, Yimna Tomi Balov is keeping good away from its owner. Right, because that is idiom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I don't understand. Maybe, maybe it's um, it's a prediction. Not a prediction. It's a like a. Well, you know, soothsaying, foreseeing. It's not saying that nobody can become like Moshe. It's saying that nobody will become like Moshe. Not that they can't. It just happens to me that nobody will because um, nobody put in, nobody put in the work like he did, like he did. Well, nobody ever will put in the work. Nobody ever will put in the work like he did. Yeah, if somebody did, yeah. they would be able to. But we're making, you know, Hashem could see the future. You there? See this? So right, but we right, right, but we know about. Nevuos that are negative, that they are always conditioned. Yeah, you're talking about last Russia, huh? Yeah, no, what I'm trying to think is would Hashem tell people that none of you are going to do it because that starts tampering with Bechira? 
Yeah, I hear it's you. not quite what he said last Russia. But last Russia got me thinking about that. Point. I hear your point. Okay. Uh, but I mean, you have a point. I mean, uh, you have a question. The Ron doesn't answer it. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm I, I, uh, I, off the cuff my own answer. I mean, let's okay. be honest. We are, you know, let me pick. Um, I will in your apostle Kulo dia ki in your Moshe. I am in Koch Nisim and if Laos. The point of the Pasuk is that Hashem is Hashem says nobody else is going to achieve it because Hashem is promising he's not going to do this miracle again for somebody else to let them achieve it. And since it was through miracles and wonders, um, it's just not, you know, if Hashem doesn't, Hashem promises not to do that for anybody else, he won't. Normal nevua, I added the word normal, but in the case of normal nevua, um, the ruach nevua, the spirit of nevua could could uh, fall on a person, fall in the sense of like you know, yantif falls out chalios. Um, Inyan efshari. It's a normal, natural process. This is actually where I want to tangent, but I'm going to want to do it at the end of the very long paragraph. Amnam kasher when the nevuah, when the when the ruach nevuah does, uh, you know, fall out on a person, yishkau kochos gufo adche yivatlu pulosav. Right, the his natural um, his natural forces quiet down. You know, or let's yishtiku, yishku, uh, subside. Adchevatlu pulos of until they stop working. This is exactly like the Ram said. In normal nevuah, person goes into some meditative trance. They're not quite awake, right? And that is natural nevuah. The the notion that of of a spirit of nevuah falling on a person when he's awake, standing on his feet, um, whole in his abilities, the way you know the way a person is when they're standing chatting with a friend. A teva. That's physically impossible. It's against the laws of nature. Somebody reaches this level. You would be both a person and a, a separated mind, a disembodied mind. I'm just going to stay with uh, at the same time. Uh, is a philosophical idea that a number we shouldn't discuss. Um, it, it's Seichel Nivdal is what is how the Ramam describes Malachim as being, you know, in, in the sense of angels, because he has Malachim being other things also. But angels are intellects without bodies, just pure intellect. And a Navi, when he's receiving Navua, his intellect has to be separated from his body and up in that angelic realm. Um, you know, getting back to the to the mass abracious motif that I keep on reintroducing whenever, whatever, you know, I think it comes up. Um, if you're on the supernatural side, right? If you are uh, getting extrasensory experiences from the supernatural side of the line, then you shouldn't be getting experiences from the physical side of the line. Like either you are an intellect in a body or you're a pure intellect sitting there in the supernatural world like a malo. And being both at the same time, well, that's nice. And that which the uh, Pasuk lets us know that this is miraculous. 
is give up the kocho kieser and the flows shechidesh lekiyim atora. So the pasuk um, is something is a nace that Hashem innovated um, and uh, you know gave it to Moshe. Well, it doesn't say to who, but we know. Um, like uh, like the rest of the miracles that Hashem did in order to make the Torah exist. So part, Moshe got this special miracle kind of nevua beyond what a person can achieve on their own because it was necessary to, for the Torah to be established in the world. It's necessary uh, in order that no false prophet would would deceive would you know deceitfully you know spread the word that he is uh, he's a navi and he's he got a prophecy and it's different than Moshe's you know maybe a Sunday supplement to the Bible or or a uh, you know, a re revelation from Gavriel or something like that. In order to eliminate those possibilities, Hashem had to had to make sure that there wouldn't be the possibility of another motion. With all due respect to the authors of the Bibles I just mentioned. Ki Hashem Hodiano, Hashem let us know, Shema Hisig Moshe Rabbeinu Mizeh, Ulamala Minhaif Shariz Pader Chapela. That which Moshe achieved in this is uh, more than what's possible in in the world of wonders. Uh, sorry, in the way of wonders. This wonder will not happen to anyone else in the world. Like happened to Moshe. In Cain. Therefore, we know that anybody who disagrees with Moshe has to be a liar. He reached a level that no other person will ever reach. So uh, no one in the world could become a separate intelligence and yet not change. From one time to another. So part of the fact that he could receive Navua while being a human and not like shifting modes from separating his intellect from the body and being in the Malach realm or, um, or you know, being in the body and being, you know, getting physical senses um, meant that, you know, he was in the same mental state at all times. Aval Hayu. All times were equal to him in um, in ability, in perception, oh, ability to perceive. This is what Chazal said in the beginning of Yuma. Amru Sham, Sheva Yamim Kodem Yom Kippurim, seven days before Yom Kippur, Shevas Yamim Kodem Srefas Parah. Or seven days before burning the paraduma, a Frisian Kohen Gadol, the Kohen Gadol will be set aside. Lamdu Zemi Sinai, there's a learned from Har Sinai. The Kasuv, because it's written, by Ishkon Kvod Hashem al Har Sinai, Hashem's glory rested or dwelled on Har Sinai. The Chaseyu Anan, the cloud covered it, Sheshes Yamim, for six days. By Yikra El Moshe, and after the six days, he called Moshe by Yom Hashvi on the seventh day, Mitoch Hanan. So that's the puzzle. The Hashem called Moshe on the seventh day after the after the cloud. My Sheishes Yamin. So why does it say Sheishes Yamin? Um, it, this is particularly ripe for Drasha because it said by Yom Hashvi. So why do you have to say that the cloud covered the mountain for six days, and on the seventh day Hashem called Moshe? We would know that six days happened before that because we could do the math. Um, most people know how to do seven minus one. 
ze bana of. So this is a binyan of. Shekola nechnas. This creates the general principle. This is one of the rules of drasha. Shekola nechnas b'machne shechina. Anybody who enters the world, the the, the camp, the machne shechina, ta'un prisha shisha. He has to be separated for six days. So, um, so this is this is. Uh, by the way, this this is what Miriam and and Iron didn't understand that he was a different kind of navi, and he needed to be separated six days before every navua, which meant perpetually. But um, yeah, um, right, Ariel, if I have a Menashe, may have historically had a good relationship or a bad relationship, but they're clearly not made into, um, it's not just we don't have the data. I would say Hashem doesn't make them into a model for us to learn from. Hashem doesn't give us the data. So we're not, like they weren't set up for us to learn from them, which is more relevant than whether or not historically they got along. You understand what I'm saying? Like it's it's one question. Yeah, historically they got along, but we wouldn't know. It's another thing to say whether or not they got along is not, was made it not relevant to the Torah. Right, that's kind of the, okay. So the thing I wanted to discuss is this idea of natural prophecy and supernatural prophecy. So the, well, the first we shall talk about what is Navua was actually in Arishan. It was Rav Haigon. So the Rav Haigon, who's one of the last of the Gonim and often argued with by Rishonim. So he kind of, yeah, he, he, he gets to be, he gets to be in Machlokas with Rishonim. But again, Haigon. He, uh, Sajigon, sorry. Rav Sajigon in Amunus Fideos says that Nevua actually was physical. And Hashem, the miracle of Nevuah was that Hashem vibrated air. He doesn't say that, but Hashem made a sound, an actual physical sound, reach the Navi's ear. It made sights reach the Navi's eyes. So it wasn't some kind of sixth sense. According to Rav Sajigon, it was actually the normal senses miraculously, you know, like a voice came to a Navi, like, which he heard with his ears. Um, but after Rav Saad, you go, nobody takes that approach. And it has that different than a Basco. I know. What? How's that different than a Basco? I don't know. Okay. I also don't know how a Basco is different according to everybody else. I didn't think a Basco was actual sound either. Like, when the Basco comes and says, you know, like, uh, a Basco that says every day, or, or, you know, oily, like, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know that. I always thought that was physical, like actual. Uh, yeah, no. I I thought Pascal is just low level prophecy. But like, let's say by Rabbi Yezer and the Tanish Lachnai, right? Doesn't say that a Pascal came out, but it sounds like everyone heard it over there. Unless you're going to say they were all on that level. Yeah, well, uh, the everyone that heard uh, were all on that level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair. I okay. Guess. I guess you know, I, I know. It's, I, the the way I thought of it is Navua, you know, Moshe's Navua, Navua, Ruachakodesh, and Basko. Okay. And then there's levels below Basko, like uh, you know, inspiring a, a musical composition or something, where you know the the creative person gets a gets a claim fall from a Shprochu. I think Ramosha Kodavera writes about it. Um, in one of his muster books, not one of his couple of books. Um, but in any case, whether or not the spectrum really goes that far down is is you know obviously open to discussion. But in back to back to what I want to say about Navua. So according to the Rambam, Navua is the way the Ram portrays it for most Navian. Navua is sorry for everybody. Navua is an awareness of what is going on on the metaphysical level. 
Now, interestingly, it's less clearly stated that that's the Rambam's position by the Rambam than it is by the Abarbadel. So back in Parshas, um, there's a famous, there's a famous ra- Rambam on, um, you know, on Vayera, um, so Ramban on Vayera, famous Ramban. That's always an interesting phrase, right? How many people know the Ramban existed? So this particular comment is famous, but the famous Ramban says that, uh, Ramam says that, that any Navua that involves Malachim, any story in the Chumash that involves Malachim has to be Navua. The Malachim can't be seen with the eyes and therefore it had to be seen through Navua. And then Ramban in the beginning of Ayera says, well, what about this Parsha? You're going to tell me that uh, the whole Parsha happened in Navua, so did the dome not get destroyed? Did Lot not get saved? I mean, how does the story work if, the, if, if all of this is Navua? He has a similar question about, uh, well, I mean, he has a similar question about, about, about uh, Bilam and the donkey. Because um, the Pia Asun is created, so it seems that it actually happened. Um, so the Ramban, the Ramban takes a different position, but the Abarbanel answers the Ramban's question by with this Nikuda. According to the Rambam, uh, what a Navi sees is actually going on. It's just not going on in the physical world. So the Navi is seeing the Malach that's causing X, Y, and Z to happen. He's seeing real things. Right. Um, so, for example, um, you get to Parshas Mishpatim, and Moshe and the Zikanim see a man on the throne, and there's a discussion: who is the man on the throne? And according to Rav Sadiyagon and the Rambam, it's the Kavod Nivra; it's some created entity. And according to the Ramban and a lot of other, we showed him, it's God. And then Rabbanel says, of course, according to the Rambam, things the Navi sees are real things. So the, per, the Navi can't see, um, the Navi can't see God. So even in Navua, a Navi can't see God. The man of the throne, therefore, cannot be seeing the Rabbanu And therefore, they posit that it's the Kavod Nivra. The Ramban says, though, the Ramban assumes that things that happen in dreams don't, in Navua don't really happen. Things you see in Navua don't really happen. The Ramban's approach is um, Avram is given a message by these three men. Oh. So it's not seeing what's really happening. It's seeing, it's getting a message and seeing it through, sorry, getting a message and your brain turning it into a bunch of symbols. According to the Ramam, you're seeing realities you can't understand and your brain turns it into a bunch of familiar objects. But, in, but according to the Ramam, the natural philosophy of the Ramam, the natural Navua of the Ramam, is seeing things that actually happen. And if a person develops the ability to get beyond you know, the, the limits of this world, then they would naturally, or metaphysically naturally, it's a weird word, use of the word teva, but they would, through derecha teva, be able to see these things that are going on in higher ulama, or whatever language the Ramam would use for these things. I mean, Hari Alamos is not really his life. According to the Ramban, a Navi is being given a message. So Ramban does not have this concept of a natural prophecy. It's, it's initiated by a Kaddish Baruch Hu. A Kaddish Baruch Hu saying something, saying Kaviyachal, something to the Navi. You see the difference? By asserting that normal Navua is natural, 
the Ran is putting himself on the Ramam's side of that camp, of that divide. Right? He's talking about the Seichel Nivdal, like be having a mind like a Malo. Right? So it's a it's a perception that a person can develop in themselves by being so connected to the MS that they could get beyond uh, the physical and the physical sense. To give you an idea how long ago I learned this about Benel, I noticed that there's a similar machlokas about this word that comes up in Mishalim in the Gemara. It's called Aspaklaria. So the, there's two, there's- I would say it sounds familiar. Yeah. So there, Aspaklaria, by the way, is actually a Greek word. It's, it's from, well, it's borrowed from the Greek. It's an Aramaic word. But lapis specularis is a clear stone. Spec, like spectacle, inspect, to look. So lapis specularis is a clear stone that people who couldn't afford glass would use because it's, yo, know, it's not see-through, see-through. It would distort, you know, you'd have some privacy. But it's not as it's not as hard to make as melting sand. So you'd get a piece of this, you'd stick it in a hole in your wall, you'd get light. You know, but but you couldn't really see out the window. So this was this was something that people used, lapis specularis. So it became in Chazal's language um, a mashal. We don't actually find Chazal talking about actual physical pieces of us of aspaklaria. If we did, we wouldn't have this machlokas. So, for example, Moshe's nevua is aspaklaria hamiira, a well lit, or maybe clear. A lot of translators say, although hamiira means clear is beyond me, a clear aspaklaria, well lit aspaklaria. The other neviim, it's aspaklaria she'enamiira. It's not well lit, or um, Chachma Meira and Chachma Sheina Meira as a metaphor for you read as Adoros. Right, this is the Aspaklari is used for like for for clear sight and not clear sight. Now this is where it's interesting. There's two taiches for the word Aspaklari. Yes, it's a clear. We know it's something clear, according to some Rishonim. It's a mirror. According to other Rishonim, it's a lens. According to the There's Ramban. According to the other Rishonim, it's a what? Lens. Lens. In other words, is this Machlokas Rishonim, is an Aspaklari something you see through or something you see yourself in? Now, what I found, the Lishi Testo I made up. Shortly before starting my blogs, I was entranced with the word. Is that um, the Ramam says that Aspaklari is a mirror, and according to the Ramam, the Aspaklari, the Aspaklaria of Navua, you see reality, right? You see reality by getting to a higher self. According to the Ramban, it's a lens. You're seeing outside yourself. It's lishitaso. In fact, it, it, it could even be the, the seeds of the big machlokas in the Eastern Europe about uh, is the tachlis of mitzvos to connect to the Ribbono Shalom or to perfect the self. Right? That that's Paklaria, that's a lens, right? That's Paklaria, that's a lens, is the person in contact with the Ribbon Shalom. Well, that's the Ramban's Navi who's getting messages from the Ribbon Shalom. Whereas the Paklaria, that's a mirror, is a way to perfect yourself. And that's the, that's the Ramban's Navi who is aware of what's going on in the world. It's really a question of, of where there's the break. For the rest of us, is the break between me and the Rebbe Shalom or within myself? Why am I I not consciously aware of of what the Rebbe Shalom is doing? Right? Is it because there's a break between me and the Rebbe Shalom? 
in which case I need to repair the connection to the bore, or is the break within myself and I just need to reconnect with that part of myself that's already there. And all that rests in the word Aspaklaria and all that rests in the, in the different ways of, of viewing Navua and what kind of perfection we look for in a Navi. And all that boils down to whether or not there's such a thing as natural, as natural nevuah. Is there a nevuah b'ter hateva? If nevuah is within the reach of everybody and it's the person who could be broken, then a person who works on himself, a kol yudei shemayim chutzmi or shemayim, could reach nevuah. So there's nevuah b'ter hateva. If it's a message from Rabbon Shalom, it has to initiate with Rabbon Shalom. There is no Bader Chateva. So that was that was the the um, that was that was the tangent I wanted to do after the uh, after that, that paragraph. Yeah. So I was really taken by the idea that the word Aspaklaria means different things depending upon which fork in the Hashkafic road is Rabbi is. Rabbi Bechafra put it, right? The, the, the Shleimos versus the Baker's fork. And that was how it ended up being the name of my blog. I mean, that was the, the name of my blog all came from learning that at Barbanel. Um, so it's not, as I said, again, it's not as clear from the Ramam that that's the Ramam's position. That's the, how the, the Barbanel ex, on Chumash explains the Ramam's position. And the Abarbanel has a parish on the Mora. So it, when he says that that's why he believes the Ramam says, it's one Rishon who, like, you know, has a firm, you know, whatever, position on. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Abarbanel has a firm position on the Mora. So we have a question. Um, how did we learn from Moshe Rabbeinu? The uh, Kohen Gadol by Yom Kippur. How did Chazal learn from Moshe Rabbeinu to the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur? The Kohen Asori Fesapara. And the Kohen, right? We just said that the six-day waiting period comes from Moshe, and from there we learned that there has to be a six-day separation period for the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur and the Kohen who burns the Paraduma. Well, hello. You don't learn a Kalvachomer to go beyond what is the, 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 the what do I want to say? You know, if the little, if the Kal is X, then the, Comer also has to be X. We don't say if the cow is X and the comer, comer has to be X plus. Right? You can't learn from a cow of Homer more than whatever property is in the cow. If this, if this Mamad, which would never happen again, required separation. So that's the Homer. Moshe is the more superlative case because Moshe reached some state of communion with God that is never achieved again. The Kohen Gadol and the Kohen who's burning the Parah Duma, Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippur entering with Nim, and the Kohen who burns the Parah Duma, they're doing something that, well, I mean, one of them happens every year. Wait, so how do you learn from Moshe Rabbeinu? To to these two cases, it should be the other way around. If these two cases needed separation, Kavachomer Moshe. Bachuvahi. So what's the answer? Yeshinoi face Paulus change and being able to be worked on, malleability. Lo yavo ki imitzad hefach. They only come when there are opposites. Ki adavar lo yishtan imitzad atzmo. Something doesn't change on its own. Lo litzad 
Dumaho. And not because of something similar to it. Elamitzada Facho, only from its opposite. See, Hegel would like this, right? You need a synthesis and synthesis. You need a thesis and an antithesis, and then you could get to a synthesis. If you have two of the same thing, you don't get to synthesis. These separated intelligences, being above any opposites, they don't change. You know, I, I want to I want a tangent on this, and it's already after nine, although we started late. Um, so I'm going to stop here, and we're I'm going to discuss the fact that people change, but malachim don't change. Um, uh, it's a topic in and of itself, and I think it's wait for next week. Mm-hmm.